Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's gonna be Larva, it's gonna be Snow, it's Circuit Breakers, bottom left. It is Snow, quite possibly the best Protoss player alive right now, and in the top left it's gonna be Larva, an excellent Zerg player. I don't know who the top Zerg player right now is. Hmm, maybe Soma? I need to look at the rankings. All right, so this is going to be an RJB replay. I had a subscriber ask me for a Larva replay last uh, Friday or Thursday, and then serendipitously, RJB sent me an excellent replay featuring Larva and Snow, and you're seeing it now. Terry the Overlord moving out. Yes, you are going the right way. Get a huff of that Vespian gas to keep you going. Doom, 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 doom. I'm excited. I'm excited because RJB replays are always, always interesting and exciting in some way. Look for the hashtag of my videos, hashtag RJBTV, to know it's an RJB replay. Overpool here. Wait, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Is that a nine pool I see? Yes, a nine pool into an extractor trick? Nope, not an extractor trick. Okay, so we're going to have speedlings in your future here, Snow. Gate opening, oh boy. Gate opening versus a nine pool. That is... Uh, that's a build order loss. But again, Snow is the best Protoss player right now. So we'll see how he handles it. Shall we? We shall indeed. Pool done. Three larva. One, two, three. Oh my gosh. Third larva, right on time. Sixlings on the way. Probe has no idea that there's a pool already done. Mm. Snow, pull the boys. Pull the probes. I think he's going to have to pull the probes to hold this. All right. So sixlings at two minutes and 20 seconds. Huh, huh, huh. Hoofing it down. Ah, probe sees them. Okay, so this is why you probe scout. <laughs> you probe scout so you can see lings at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. All right, so uh, hurry. Hard wall. Hard wall. Maybe not hard wall. There we go. Bob the Zealot fitting in there. And again, pulling the probes. Oh, no. Oh, no, Zealots. Oh, Dead. Pop it out on the wrong side of the gateway. <laughs> it's desperation time here for Snow, but I think I think he's going to hold it here by using excellent probe micro, excellent zealot micro, and ah, blocking the ramp so the lings can't scout. Oh, nice, nice snipe of that probe. Another probe down. Okay, so uh, just continuing to flood here, and now they have speed. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, this is abject chaos. We are, yes, this is great. We don't get games like this very often. We don't get, we usually get over pools. We get hatch first plays, but for a literal nine pool opening, this is nuts. All right, so lings are in. More lings coming down. Dude, depowering this gateway is like the end of all time. More lings coming down. Does find enough... Uh, enough resources there to throw down an expansion. Larva does. It's 13 to 8 workers. I say this every time there's a game like this. But if somebody shows up with a lot of units fast and tries to kill you, you can afford to lose some workers. You can. Because if you lose workers, guess what? You're even on workers. You're probably ahead on workers, especially if it's a Zerg player here. It's 14 to 8 workers right now. That is what we're dealing with. So you have to... Oh, you're microing in two places at once right now. Three Zealots are out, though. They're protecting this pylon with their lives, and I think they're going to be able to do it, too. Yeah, so just two sets of lings, two sets of lings, two sets of lings, and when this hatchery finishes, it's going to be... Well, actually, one set of lings, right? Yeah, two sets of lings sometimes. Ah, the slipperiness, the absolute slipperiness of zealots in situations where you're trying to surround them with lings. It's tough, man. Don't know why. But yeah, the zealots really can't do much here other than protect this pylon with their lives, and continuing to make zealots here is snow. 15 to 7 workers is awesome stuff. Ooh, I like the third hatch from Larva here, too. This is just, I mean, a lesser Protoss is dead at this point. Nice snipe on that uh, cannon, though. That was disgusting. 
You know, I think he could be getting hits off on this pylon a little bit more frequently than he is. Like, you don't have to sit there and smash it. My gosh. Yeah, I mean, at this stage of the game, it's basically one zealot per ling, so this is just not going to work out for Larva. He is still sending lings down, though. My gosh, this is absolute chaos! He's just... He's willing to give up links here if it means cannons don't happen. Nice snipe on that probe, too. This is nuts. This is intense. Is this getting an epic tag? If this is how this game starts, holy crap. And, I mean, this could be a sneaky twofer, for all you know. Okay, so we're... Ling's busting through here is going to be really, really difficult now. Although, that zealot's... Oh, never mind. They could bust through, but do they want to fight against four zealots? Some of them are pretty injured already, but three of them are pretty healthy. That guy has full HP, full shields. Dude, this pressure is nuts. He's just he's sitting here on seven workers. I think at some point he's basically going to be like, all right, it's over. Let's throw up, you know, 12 drones at a time here. Oh, my gosh. The zealots are dying, but now the cannon is up. Okay, so I think that's it. I think once the cannon's up, oh my. well, maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, these probes are sacrificing their lives so the cannon stays alive. So Again, brilliant. 19 to 7 workers. Yes, you do want to fight against these lings with your probes in this situation. Because you have to to stay alive and you can afford to do so economically. It's good. It's really good. Okay, so I think everything's chill. Drones, yep, two, three drones at a time being produced up there from Larva. I don't know if you can go straight drones here. I guess the zealot count kind of got whittled down during that last attack, didn't it? Okay, so yeah. Overlord inside your house. Single zergling inside your house. Cannon wipes it out. Okay, so all the links are gone. The overlord scouting is happening, yes. Uh, cybernetic score getting started at seven minutes. That's how nuts the first seven minutes of this game have been. 21 to 12 workers. There you go. Seven drones at a time are fired up here by a larva. That's exactly what I was expecting him to do. Now, the question is, if he doesn't sneak in this third hatch, does he have enough lings to actually win the game there? I don't know. He just he just played both sides, right? He said, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm also going to try to get up a third hatch. If it doesn't work, then so be it. I'm going to have a third hatch ready to go. I'm going to have drones up. 25 to 19 workers. There you go. Bam. He's cool. Larva's fine. Larva is an excellent, excellent macro zerg player. He is somebody who is known sometimes just to kind of flood ya. Right? Who needs perfect spell casting? Who needs micro? Who needs to get perfect surrounds? I'm just gonna macro my face off, throw lings and ultras at you until you die. Which is really more of a ZVT strategy than a ZVP one, but still. Yeah, everything's cool. But guess what? Corsair's on the way. Neat. Citadel of a Dune coming in. Hydralisk Den has got to be on the way here at this stage of the game because there is no lair to speak of whatsoever. Macro hatches, yes. But seriously, at some point, my dude, is he going to try to hold this thing with spores? He is. Looking to bring in the overlords over to this creep colony. Wow. He's going to deal with the Corsair pressure with the power of a spore colony. Okay. I mean, look, it's not going to be a huge committal to Corsairs because we don't have plus one attack coming on in the cybernetic score. So definitely could be fine for this spore, at least for the time being. At some point. Yeah, there you go. He's got a Hydralisk Den coming in now, but just... As a stopgap measure, it's going to be Spore in every Overlord, except for this guy. Oh, no. No! Overlord Senpai! <laughs> Stay alive! Stay with us! <laughs> well, one Overlord down is not too bad, I suppose. But yeah, drone count, man. 43 to 34. Both players are macroing their hearts out right now. Yeah. So Corsair counts like, I don't know, two or three. He stopped making Corsairs. He doesn't have the plus one. Ling's fighting against these zealots, recognizing how many zealots do you have? And the answer is a lot. There's at least seven. 
And they're working on the speed upgrade. It's almost done. So, like, Sunkens are going to be a must here. So, you gotta, again, you got to sunken up your natural base and your third base. Because you don't know where the Zealots are going. And sure, they're slow now, but they will be fast soon enough. Thank you very much. So, yeah, hit that like button if you're enjoying the game in the cast so far. This has been crazy. Like, that early pressure from Larva, Snow holding it. I mean, was it just barely or was that a pro hold? It was a pro hold. Of course it was. All right, Lings. There you go. Lings and Sunkins, man. Working together. Some drones in the mix here, too. Overlords are obscuring our vision of what we're dealing with here. Hydra's in production here, too. Zealots get wiped out, except for this guy who manages to slip out. And, ooh, he actually gets a kill on his way out there with 3 HP. Boss. Boss, man. Lair getting started at 10 minutes. <laughs> so beautiful. Three base in it here. Got the macro hatches. Got... I mean, what is that? Four macro hatches on the map right now? So insane. Three. Three macro hatches on the map. I can totally count when I'm casting. Don't worry about it. Okay, so further plans here by Snow. Seem to be... Nothing much. A lot of zealots. A lot of zealots in the future here for Larva. Because the Hydras have to try to deal with the Corsairs and try to deal with the zealots at the same time. And the positioning has to be good or else the zealots will kill your Hydras. Frustrating stuff. Ling's on the counterattack. Maybe checking to see if there's a third base out there somewhere. This probe definitely has designs on getting a third base. Zealots will escort it down here to this minerals only at potential third base location. And yeah, just sniping the probe. We're just going to get the probe, and we're good. That's it. Pulled some zealots home. That's perfect. The zealots at home, way better than zealots over here. Without a doubt. So, yeah, once the lair is done, we can probably get lurker aspect. Lurker aspect starting here for larva would be good. Expanding 12 o'clock. A little bit naked, but he does kind of have map control, sort of, with these lings running all over the place. Ooh, DT's in production from snow. That's his plan. Queen's nest on the way from larva, too. So, hive tech is not too far away. Zerg players. I know you guys get stressed whenever a Protoss uh, versus Zerg features a Zerg who doesn't want to use Defilers. It works sometimes. It really does. Like, Hydro Lurker is really strong against Protoss. It's just eventually you kind of run out of steam, and then there's like a million, well, million High Templar with Storm and Reavers and stuff. And you're just kind of a sad panda. But it does work. It does work sometimes, but this is not going to... I don't think this is going to be one of those games... Bottom, 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 bottom. So pretty chill. I mean, the first 10 minutes of the game were nuts, but both players just macroing up, right? Third base, Protoss, fourth base, or everything's fine and dandy. Zealots kill some lings over here, and that means we know there's zealots over here now, says Larva. Trying to get some sunkens up. Maybe a spore too. There's a DT in the mix here. Yeah, lings in front, hydras in back. That is the positioning you want. High Templar are here. Do they? They do not have Storm. I don't know if Snow intended for Storm to be done right now because he brought High Templar to the front like he intended to, but now he's going home. I wonder if he forgot. <laughs> oh, no, Snow. Oh, no. Like, I seriously hope that Snow did not just forget about Storm. I, it really seems like he did. He showed up there with Zealots and High Templar ready to rock, and then he pressed the T button, and nothing happened, and he was like, what? And then he started Storm. I really... I really think that's what happens. This is... Man, Zealots are just so tough. Look at them eating. Um, nom, 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 nom. Oh, Ling's chased all the High Templar down. Wiped them out. Okay. Couldn't even defend themselves. There's a DT in here. It's got five kills, though. Not bad. Overlord speed done? Let's see here. Yes, Overlord speed is done. It's a 6-7 kill High Templar. Oh, I don't know if it can prevent the death of this fourth base. No, definitely not. So Snow's going to lose this fourth. He's going to cancel it or just straight up... I think he just straight up lost that. Focus the hot... Yeah, 12 kill Dark Templar. That guy goes into the Hall of Fame for sure. I mean, he's dead now, but his name will be enshrined. <gasps> In glory. Dude, bottom right base by Snow. I didn't even look at that. Dude, I am not. I did not expect him to even try to expand down here, but he is. 
That's a fourth base for him, and this is a fifth base at the six o'clock. Oh, snow. Oh, snow. Oh, look who's going mutalisks. Larva is. Larva says, you know what's good? Mutas. Picking off High Templar with mutas is hot and tight. I love it. Let's, uh, I guess he must have already wiped out the co No, the two coursers are still here. God, it's going mutas. How many ZVPs do I have to cast over the last little while where it's mutalisks? Hmm? That's the question of the day. Ah, well. Adrenal's coming in from Larva. That's a big thing for the Zerg players, obviously. He's kind of just swinging down. He ha ah, Adrenal's about to finish. Once Adrenal's up, these Lings are going to trade very well against these Zealots. It's a big problem for Zealots, which is why they're pulling back. Like, normally they would fight here, but with cannon support, it goes a lot better for them. So, Muto's finding High Templar, dodging storms as they do. Trying to pick off high uh, probes while they can as well. Just surprise. 11 Mutalisks have been created because that's what Zerg players can do. They can just casually show up with 11 Mutas. You didn't scout it perfectly, and haha, -ha, take that. Hydras, I don't know where these guys are going, but they're move commanding their way to their dead. This Overlord is dead as well. I'm pretty sure Larva doesn't know this bottom right base actually exists. Okay, Larva busting himself back into this game. I feel like he was in a lot of trouble, but maybe Snow got a little bit too greedy here. All right, so more Corsairs produced, which means they're chasing these Mutas away. That Muta flock went all the way down to seven from 11. Not great. Four Mutas dead there to that Corsair ball. Is he making more Corsairs? Yes, making more Corsairs, getting the air weapons upgraded. says it's never too late. Top right base coming in here from Larva. Trying to get a fifth base of his own, but he's behind. Snow's on five bases. Yes, some of his probes died at 77 to 62 workers in favor of the Zerg player, which is actually really bad. Like, super ultra bad for our guy, Snow, right now to be down that many workers in his EVP against Larva. Especially. Especially I'm all. Scourge catching Corsairs. Hot stuff. High Templar eating Snow. Well, throwing down storms. Muto's eating storms. Do not fight these cannons. Do not. Okay, his micro is elsewhere right now. He just lost all of his mutos. Okay, well, that's the thing about mutos. They're fast. They hit hard. They're awesome. But, man, if you don't perfectly micro them and pay attention to them and babysit them forever, then they will die. They will die the second you leave off of having perfect levels of attention. I think Larva needs another base. I really do. His Overlord spread right now is incredibly admirable. Look how many Overlords there are everywhere. I mean, sure, the Corsair Ball is hunting them down, but they're doing great. Now, the problem is, you want to expand here? No, not really. But expanding here is only minerals, and you need that gas. Ugh. All right, so Adrenalings are out. But Zealots supported by Archons are way better than just Zealots. And Archons supported by Zealots are way better than just Archons. So symbiotic relationship here. Lings are... I don't know at what point he realized this base was here. But here he comes. Uh, it's not enough Lings to take every one of these cannons down. And in fact, one of the cannons died. <laughs> That's the power of cannons, my friend. No attack upgrades on these Zerglings either. He's working on plus one. He'll get it at some point. All right, Lurker Hydra. But the full surround of the Protoss, the Storm, the Archons, the Zealots cutting through these Lurkers. As though they are lawnmowers on a lawn. Oh my gosh, all that Zerg just completely got wiped out. Reinforcing from Larva, because again, he's an insanely good macro player. He shows up, causes a lot of issues, pushes the Protoss back a little bit. Hydra's getting shots off on Archons from a football field away is always awesome. I don't know what this Overlord is trying to do, but he's going to die to cannons. Hydra's by themselves, not so hot. In fact, eating a delicious storm to the face. Overlord's, again, just kind of wandering down into cannon range. I don't know what for exactly. It's 161 to 142 supply. This game is banana pants right now. Larva, high ground hydras, lings jumping on those cannons. Even without the plus one attack. Oh, they have plus one attack now. Yeah, plus one attack and adrenal is not bad for 19 minutes, I guess. Hydras just standing in here. The storms. How many storms do you need to deal with these hydras? More than we have, unfortunately. Commander. Oh, this is bad. This base is getting completely evacuated. Probes retreating from it. Snow's not sure he can save it. Oh, these high temp... Focus the high templar. 
Focus the High Templar. Okay, there we go. Focus in the High Templar. And this base is going to die. Dude, Larva is insanely good. Uh, I cannot believe how well he is playing this game right now. He's expanding. Yep, there you go to a sixth base on the right side. Spawn location natural. Just killed Snow's third. But guess what? Snow's got a seventh base up here. So, uh, no, wait. One, two, three, four, four. This is his sixth base, rather. I like that he's just making overlords and just sending them across the map. He's got that scouting stuff down, man. Another DT. He's going to try to break the record of the DT from earlier in the game, who had, I think, 12? Not bad. Ah, Zealots. You, your day is over. These are Adrenalings now, my friend. These Adrenalings will trade extremely well with you. Run! Flee from them! They will chase you down. I really don't think that Larva understands there's a DT down here wailing away on his Hydras. The Zealots are going to wipe out a bunch of them, too. Yeah, this group, this is just not the place for you, man. Go back to where you're safe, down here in the southern section of the map. Lings and Hydras try to shut down this Nexus. Third base retake attempt by Snow. Not happening. Ah, seventh base from Larva. Minerals only. He's going pretty heavy on Lings. So you know what? Having a million Lings is not bad. 175 to 149 total supply. 83 to 63 workers. I just... As my brain tries to figure out a way in which Larva doesn't win this game, the only thing that comes to mind is Storm. Do you have Infinite Storm? And remember when I was like, Zerg players hate it. <laughs> when the Zerg person they're watching doesn't make Defilers, and I was like, nah, it's fine. Larva's going to make Defilers, and then he totally hasn't yet at all this game, but he's doing okay anyway, but the longer the game goes on, the worse it is for him. Remember that? So yeah, what this turns into is Spellcaster versus not Spellcaster. And you know who's Spellcasting? Snow. You know who's not Spellcasting at all? Larva. But boy, is he flooding. He's got left side base, and he's got right side base. So this is going to be a game where it's like... 8,000 Zerg units created and like 47 Protoss units created and Snow can still win somehow anyway because this is Larva just running Lings into storms across this bridge into storms that's what he's doing I don't even know where the High Templar who cast that storm was it wasn't this guy because he has no kills at all but yeah this whole top of the half map of the map here belongs to our guy Larva Snow needs to start moving out and he is he needs to kill a base. He needs to establish this base. These are two things on his to-do list right now. It seems at the moment he is just more interested in reestablishing his own six. Can't blame him for that. But, I mean, Larva, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bases. It is a nine basing Zerg. Again, Protoss fans, don't turn this off. Because you know why? Because Larva doesn't have Defilers. No Dark Swarm. No Plague. This is him just throwing cracklings. Oh, wait, a plague! Never mind. That changes everything. Larva just went back to being the favorite in this match. DT hanging out, trying to harass some drones up here at the, I don't even know, what this, on the top right-ish of the map. Sure, why not? Snow spreading so that one plague can't catch everything, but your units are going to clump up kind of eventually, aren't they? Yeah, Lurker sunken town over here at the 9 o'clock going down that ramp is not great with the army you have. If you had some Reavers, maybe. But Larva decided to wait for about 20 minutes before busting out Plague and Dark Swarm and stuff. So, yeah, every Zerg player would just, like, heart attacked. But it worked out in the end. We're here. See, reestablishing the 6th base and really just trying to find somewhere he can bust through the Zerg ranks. And take out an entire base. Slow down this economy of Larva somehow, some way. See, look how Castellot has EVP recently. Boy, I love this matchup, though. It is definitely my favorite. It's just... You have great counters for everything. Like, tons of units are viable in here. Different compositions, different choices. The way the game evolves oh, as the minutes tick away here. We're going to start seeing more Archons in the mix. Probably going to see some Reavers added into this game here, too, by Snow. Although, I don't know. We're 24 minutes in. He hasn't started them yet. So I am curious that perhaps he's not interested in those today. But we've got time. We've got plenty of time. Ooh, further air weapons here. That's interesting. 
And he's thrown down another Stargate. This has just got to be Mass Corsair, right? There's no way this is Carriers. Carriers is dumb again, Zerg. Okay, Plague Up, Plague Up. Both Defilers pay for their insolence by dying, but they got some good Plagues on a large chunk of Gateway Army here for Snow. That's going to be so much easier in the next battle for the Zerg player. So I think... I don't know. Larva killing this base makes his day a lot easier, but I don't think he needs to kill it to win this game. Ah, how much of an economic advantage does he need? Considering, I mean, the unit's lost at this point. Look at this DT. He's so... Ah, oh, he's out. He's so cheeky coming down here sniping those guys. Ah! Coming across the bridge. The bridge of storms. The bridge of death. The bridge of doom if you're a Zergling. But also everybody else is doomed because... The Zerglings keep... Well, they don't really keep coming, do they? Not really, no. So, cannon down. Great. Multiple cannons exist. Zealots exist. Archons staring at the camera. Turn their backs to the camera. More Lings heading down. Just trying to make Snow pay attention to something other than his army out here. Zealots holding the bridge. This is Sparta, man. Zealots holding it. Storm helping immensely there. Snow just continuing to poke. Trying desperately to find a base that he can kill. Something. Oh my gosh! It is carriers! Snow! You madman! Remember when I was like, nah, ridiculous. Carriers, and it's not even outsider against a Zerg player. Pa. Ha! Holy crap! I have cast some ZVPs in the past on maps that are not outsider that feature carriers and they are always insane. I think, did I cast a game with Larva where somebody tried to go carriers on him on a map? It wasn't Circuit Breakers. I really can't remember what the map was. I might have to go through my archives and find it. If you want to see another game where a Protoss goes carriers against a Zergon, not Outsider, or even on Outsider, let me know. I'll put a link in the description for him. So, Ultralisks the tech. Uh, not exactly what you want when your opponent is sinking money into carriers because he's crazy. Yeah, this is getting epic tagged. I don't care. RJB, man. Every once in a while, he just goes through his ginormous group of replays and finds the sickest ones and sends them to me. And then I go through those over the course of like a week or two, three weeks, and uh, it's great. Then we restart the cycle. But yeah, check out RJB. YouTube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. Yeah, these lings coming down are not doing great against Archon Zealot. They never do. We talked about this earlier. Yeah, Larva's resources, units lost, tab today here, is going to be at least 2k. I might... It might be pushing 3k when all is said and done here. This is a lot of deadlings, man. Dude, if they can get in here and kind of spot the carriers before... Actually, the carriers are being built down here, so never mind. They're not going to spot anything down in the bottom left. Yeah, but storms, archons, zealots, cannons. Just lings getting absolutely thrown to the slaughter here. Okay, Overlord scouts the carrier fleet. Yeah, I don't think... Maybe he didn't see the carriers, but he saw the four Stargates. And said, okay... Actually, where is the fleet beacon? This is Falcon being blind as usual. Gotta find the fleet beacon. There is a robotic support bay. So Reavers could be in the mix, but instead of the gas is going into carriers. Because Snow is a madman. A true madman. There's your fleet beacon over here. Okay. Fair enough. So the carriers have arrived. And you have sunkens and lurkers. Good luck with that right side 3 o'clock base. Scourge. Taking an obs down so you can't kill the lurkers. And maybe if the, ling uh, the drones can burrow, that'd be nice. Larva seems to want to deal with this with Scourge for the moment. But also going to ling alter his way to victory. Or try to do so against some of these archons. That guy almost got caught out. And wiped out here. Ugh. Okay, evacuation from 3 o'clock. Ling Ultra, no Dark Swarm support, mind you. Yeah, man, one Dark Swarm, and that entire base dies. I guess there's High Templar, so that's not true. Ultralist dies to cannons. That's embarrassing stuff. Right side base dies immediately replanted and immediately killed again. 
Scourge are fast. Carriers are slow. Okay, all right. A couple carriers go down, but two more. Replace the two or three or four that have fallen thus far. I still think Larva's okay. Yeah, he's just scourging his way to dealing with these carriers. He's not going to go Dark Swarm Hydra. He's not going to go Devour or anything. This is an absolutely insane ZVP. Crazy. Snow looks at the situation and says, I guess carrier is the best I can do. I still think Reavers might have been a better choice for him. He's got the tech fort and everything, but whatever. But a bunch of Hydras coming in. Scourge, do not want to fight with those Archons. Ooh, dragged an Archon down in his death, though. To sunk in Lurker land. Scourge, swinging up. Oh, beautiful angle. Ooh, carrier down. One of them down. One took a couple hits as well. Shields are effectively gone. More Scourge, man. Larva just has the economy to do this. Another one down. There's two carriers. Not nearly as scary as four, as you would expect. So it's Hydra's. It's Scourge. Sport. Trying to do something against these Interceptors. Both players have pretty decent banks. 4,800 minerals for Larva. 4,900 for Snow. Both about 1,000, 2,000 gas or so. Scourge down to the south, trying to come from an angle where not expected, but protected by the Archons. Yeah, no real connections there. Oh, new Scourge! Ah! All right. Oh, Carrier's dead. I don't know. The Carrier's count getting reset seems pretty bad for Snow. He's still making them, though. I don't know. Carriers are the scariest when there's like 11 or 12 of them. When you only have two and they keep getting reset, it's not a good time, but my gosh, this game. Carriers on Circuit Breakers, of all things. Hydras take down an Archon. Hydras not really microing all that much against these Archons. They do really well against the Archons, but if they're just right up in the face. Hatch down to the 3 o'clock again, but Larva can afford to, again, can't afford to fix that. Dude, these high Templar, though. Scourge checking to see if there's more carriers they can kill. They're being protected by, like, eight cannons down here in the bottom right, though. So, tough to find angles. Man, Archons are dying, but they are taking Hydralisks with them, man. The storm count is insane. There are still, like, four storms here. Larva just not wanting to commit too much. Is just baiting storms out, baiting storms out. He does want this base, obviously. This is crazy. This is crazy. I still think my money's on Larva here. Yeah, so Archon down, Archon down. This is Larva style, right? He just overwhelms you. Dude, that is an Artosis pylon if ever I've seen one. Killing that pylon would be sick. I don't know if you guys are aware, but Artosis... Back when he was professionally competing in StarCraft II, there was a day, there was a time when he had a single pylon powering like four gateways and like three cannons and all sorts of stuff. And yeah, the enemy sniped it and forever since it was called an Artosis pylon. Yeah, I don't think he's ever done that since. I think he's done a pretty good job trying to avoid that. Ooh, and Snare coming in and the Mutalisks on the way. Huh. Round of speed lot and high Templar to deal with this Hydra tech that Larva's gone for and trying to deal with the Archons and the carriers. Good tech switch by Snow. Beautiful tech switch by Snow, actually. Like, holy crap, insanely good. No detection, though, so these high Templar... Uh, maybe just blind storm on those lurkers might be pretty good. <laughs> egg into Hydra, back into Egg. I like it. I like it a lot. The Mutos are trying to snipe these High Templar. Beautifully done. I mean, that's what they're built for, man. Okay, so now your High Templar are gone. The Zealots are like, uh, retreat. Retreat. 200 supply for Larva. Pretty much continuously for the last, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, it feels like. Maybe not that long, but 15, maybe. More High Templar, more Zealots, more Corsairs. Archons in production here, too. The Corsairs to deal with the Mutalisks. I mean, this is... 
an insane game. Ah, we do get the Devourers. So we decide Scourge are not quite enough to deal with this Protoss Carrier Ball. So let's get some Devourers out. My gosh. Yep, Epic Tagged. Epic Tagged a ZVP for your enjoyment today. I keep thinking... I mean, these are units. They just haven't really been interested in attacking anything for a while. Leaving this Overlord alive is pretty cool, too. Alright, so the Devourers are here. They Plus one Carapace on the Devourers. The Carriers are at plus three attack, plus three shields. No plating upgrade. Might get that started here. I don't know. So Carriers attacking his own Robotics Bay to cue all the Interceptors to release at the same time when they're ready to go. It's a pretty pro-level move there. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem that hard to pull off, I suppose. Yeah, and Corsair Count's heavy here, too. So they can do a good job sniping off the Scourge as they come in. Not as good against Devourers, though. Archons are, though. Archons are really good against Devourers if they can get hits off on them. Dude, this is insane. All right, well, here we go. Nice plagues on everything there. Hydra's standing in. Chaos abounds. Zealot's trying to deal with the Hydra's. Another plague, so every carrier is plagued. And then the Hydras pull back, wait for the Plague to do their damage. The Devourers are biding their time. They'll get in there once the Plague has fully brought them down to like 4 HP. Ton of shields, yes. Good golly, this is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah, I don't think Snow can do this. I'm looking at it. The Devourers are joining the party here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Scourge in the mix. Carrier down. Devourers will fight against the Corsairs to some extent, without a doubt. And that's a GG! Snow taps out! Yep, and Larva is your winner in 36 minutes. Yeah, how many times do we see Devourers in professional level ZVPs? Once every 800,000 games, it feels like. And yeah, how many times do we see Carriers in ZVPs? More often, but still not that frequently. Not even close. Not even the tiniest little bit of close there. These Scourge didn't do anything. Anyway, yeah, not bad. I really feel it was a desperation play from Snow. He was just like, okay, Larva has managed to take more than half of the map by two bases. And he's killed this. I gotta do something. I, I cannot bust this whole Lurker sunken Hydra Ling play with Lurker support. A little bit of play coming in there, too. I still think Reavers would have been a better choice. I think every Protoss player watching this is like, why don't you just make Reavers? Sit them at the top of the ramp, bust down these Sunkins, get the Lurkers. I mean, seems like an easier way to do this thing than Carriers, where just Zerg has every answer to Carriers possible. Hiders are great. Devourers are great. Scourge are great. Dark Swarm and Play are great. Like, great options. It's not as though, oh, they got four options, and three of them are okay, and one of them's great. No, they're all great. They're all very, very good. But yeah, Snow not able, really able to kill many bases today. The 3 o'clock went down, yes. But other than that, I think every base that Larva tossed up survived the day. Which is good. You got some good drone kills, right? There was that one DT killing drones in here. I mean, drones dying, defending the attack up this way. This game started with a 9 pool and early pressure from our guy Larva. And this is where he ended up. What is this? Am I just now seeing there are, like, metal poles going through the gateways? Have those always been there? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I mean, I guess they have always been there. Maybe because the game is over. Sometimes they change graphics when the game's over. But anyway. Yeah, Larva. Just macro, 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 macro. Macroed his face off there. Lost a billion units. I want, really want to see that. But yeah, hit the like button if you enjoyed that game. That was nuts. 393,000 points there from Larva. 366 from Snow. He, okay, so we only lost 1,000. But still, he produced 1,500 units in 36 minutes. Kill death ratio was 11 to 3. That's like a 4 to 1. Basically, a 4 to 1 kill death ratio for Snow. Not enough because he got outproduced so hard. He got outproduced, I guess, 3 to 1. Anyway. Carriers did not get the value they needed. And the Larva outspending the Protoss by a big chunk. Big, big margin there. You can do the math. 112 to 87,000. 
Blah, 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 blah. So well done there, Larva. He gets the win doing what Larva does. And this is why that subscriber requested a Larva game. Because they're fun. Because they're fun. All right, GG. And that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Starcraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.